Are you ready to see the best 3D printed construction site I've ever visited? This project with Icon and Lennar in Georgetown near Austin, Texas is going to be 100 homes strong and they're using 7 printers at the moment with more on the way. We get to tour brand new homes that are just starting, homes that are a few layers deep, along with projects that have finished printing ready for the roof and hand over to Lennar. They are almost done with the roof on some of them and have installed the windows on one home. Best of all, we get a tour from Icon CEO Jason Ballard himself and we get an answer to the all-important question of what happens when 3D printed construction meets economies of scale. As you'll see in a minute, it was a very windy day which was bad for the audio, but there's some really golden nuggets of 3D printed construction knowledge in here from Jason if you listen. We also got the chance to do a longer form podcast which is on the Automate Construction Podcast channel or available wherever you look for podcasts online. The wind was so bad you can't even hear the introduction, so I'll introduce him myself. The man, the myth, the legend, Jason Ballard. You know, what happens is uh, the material delivery system over there takes weather reading and makes the material according to sort of temperature, pressure, irradiance, that kind of stuff, and it pumps it into the machine. So this is a good example of a house that's like just been finished, and so when we finish printing, we put a top plate on, then we hand it off to Lennar. Um, and they come in with all the same tips. Yeah. You have on most of the doors, it double curves in as opposed to going on. Yeah, so we've done a lot of like, um, with Lennar, a lot of work on like uh, getting the details right to make it as fast and efficient as possible to put in doors, to put in windows. And so a lot of these things are like the result of a collaboration between Lennar, uh, that they're sort of building performance team and our architecture team. And so you notice the rebar on the top, is that where vertical columns are poured in? Yep, that's that's where vertical reinforcement goes in. And there's, as you said, vertical columns columns are right there and then that also is where the, the top plate mates to the print itself. And this beam up here, that's a very uh, wide beam, looks like maybe 16 feet, 18 yeah, feet. That's right, this is the, the garage door. So this is yeah, the longest spans that we've printed over uh, have happened here uh, on the Lennar project because uh, this particular um, neighborhood um, called for garages. The whole thing seems uh, really curvy and angular. No corners. Architecture partnership between Icon's architecture team, the Bjarke Ingalls Group, and Lennar. Um, these are either the most affordable homes ever designed by Bjarke Ingalls or um, sort of the most architecturally progressive homes ever built by Lennar. Either way, it's a win, and we're very excited about uh, what this is going to mean for our industry. And so, did Lennar change up the electrical and plumbing process you guys have? No, this particular thing, in fact, uh, we sort of said, hey, Lennar, like, put us through our, your, our paces. Like, like, treat this like a finishing school for Icon because we do want to, like, not just grow up technologically, we want to grow up operationally so that this, this technology is easily scalable to, like, conventional job sites. So we have followed Lennar's uh, rules and practices for plumbing, for electrical, for trim, for finish, and those kinds of things. Yeah, so the, we, we were sort of both trying to push boundaries with what our architecture could do, but also it be received into the Lennar family of homes. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of the, the goal. And again, I think it, it's rather successful. So yeah, we didn't do total floor to ceiling, but you will see sort of like a uh, base of window to ceiling. And so that was sort of the compromise. So we're standing at a fresh print. They're going to start today, I heard. Yeah, today is day one of the print. What are they getting ready for preparing, making sure everything goes well? So the rails are set up, the front order is set up, and sort of all the systems are working. So what they're doing, really, you can see some of the plumbing uh, and then all of a sudden the electrical and some of the stuff are already being embedded into the slab. And they're going around to a few known points and making sure the printer is in fact where it, the software thinks it is. Um, and then they're doing a few test layers just to make everything is really right. We take our time on the first sort of two to three layers to make sure because that's sort of the foundation of the rest. And the first two to three layers are off. Uh, we sort of will pull those and redo. And if everything looks good, then we let it rip. Yeah, the 3D printing people are very familiar to them. The first layer is the most important. That's right. It's not so different uh, on a home. And so you can see uh, there's different color vests. And so like our, our yellow vests are operators, operators out there. The orange vest is like engineering support. So those are engineers sort of monitoring the first couple layers as they go down to make sure the quality is exactly what we need it to be. And then the engineers will leave and the operators will, like I said, uh, hit the gas pedal. Wow. So you have a few different teams and these guys will go on to the next fresh print to prepare it? That's right. So the sort of field step at it, because this is like our first 100 home yeah. operation. We've got like a fleet of printers. We have seven right now. We have more printers that are arriving later in the year. So it really is, as you see, like, like a mobilization. Each printer rig has its own crew, right? Sort of like a print captain and the, the, the operators of the different stations. And then also out here on site that float between sites, we have QAQC people, the material scientists who go around and make sure the 
the quality for it's supposed to be the engineering support staff to make sure uh, the machines themselves are operating the way they're supposed to be. Since you're working on a big project now, what kind of benefits have you realized at scale? So, I mean, the biggest benefit of, I mean, they're the ones you'd expect. Number one, we move like a lot faster um, in terms of time per house because uh, a lot of the initial mobilization is to get the equipment out here. You can now spread across 100 homes. All the equipment is here. You can just sort of show up every day and get back to work, um, which is very different than doing one home at a time. And then, of course, the cost efficiencies um, when you call any of the materials provider, whether it's rebar or our bulk materials for the, the lava creek mix. If you're ordering material for one house, you get one price. If you're ordering material for 100 homes, uh, you get a very different price. This is the living area of another one of the homes. What you can see here is uh, the top plates actually installed. So we CNC the top plates to match the print path, and we, we attach those, and then we hand it over to the one of our teams. What you've got going on here is the, 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 the roof trusses are on. Uh, and they're preparing now for windows and doors. And is there any finish being applied to these walls, or are they being left for all? Yeah, they'll be they'll be painted as a variant of those, like the final sort of uh, aesthetic finishes won't go on until all, all the all the rough work is done. Yeah, that's cool. The homeowner will be reminded it's a printed home every day. Correct. Yeah, we 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 really want that to be the case, right? We we think that 3D printing, of course, you can add finishes, but that, that it is aesthetically pleasing and lovely enough to stand on its own here with no finish. Yeah, and I think people appreciate that architecturally, seeing the bones of the building. That that's that was we weren't sure about that five years ago when we printed our first home, but so far every single customer that we've done work for, and actually House Zero is the only house that we ever did that wasn't for a customer. Every one of our customers, uh, New Story Community, First Village, Three Strands, and LNR, all of them have always wanted to leave the beads as they were, and so that's a. Uh, we think that's very exciting. I'm just admiring this incredibly straight vertical line of this corner behind you. I mean, yeah. What's the variance there? Um, I mean, it has to be as tight or tighter. I haven't measured the particular variance of that, but it has to be as tight or tighter than like what a framer would expect. Yeah, it uh, seems like plus or minus an eighth of an inch. You can see we're not four. having to go in and do any like uh, post tr post work or uh, finish out, which in the early days sometimes we had to, uh, which adds cost and time. And so again, when the print can stand as is when you when you walk away. That's how you're going to maximize cost and speed. On this particular house, this is actually one of the very first houses we did on this project, so it's the furthest along. So you can see uh, the roof trusses and roof structure is on. We've also got windows going in and doors getting prepped to be installed. This floor plan is pretty cool. It has a, a printed planner uh, out in front of the home. A rough out for a, a door frame, and then they, they coat it with um, like a water resistant coating to make okay. sure the house is sealed and performs appropriately. Cool. And what's the waterproofing of the walls like? Our waterproofing is like quite secure. We've done the like fill a, fill a printed wall with standing water and see how much leaks out. And it's, it's strong enough that like if you needed to, the, the wall can just be its own moisture barrier. So then is there a way for water to drain out of the walls? Yeah, there is. So we have we have weep holes and then like uh, slopes at the bottom of the wall to allow oh. that interface between the first bead and the slab is, is an excellent spot for water to escape. Are those custom windows over there? They are, we haven't used any like highly custom windows. We've used windows that are available in the Lennar catalog, right? To again, sort of keep costs and, and things like that in mind. I'm sure that's an extensive list of options. Yeah, Lennar, of course, has like very, very good buying power and a very extensive supplier and uh, vendor network. You know, the windows are in the, you, know, you can sort of really see the sense of what the space is going to be like. This will be a, a sliding door out to the backyard. And again, you can sort of see that the, all the doorways are framed out. It's pretty easy to start imagining somebody living here.